All right, so let's go. We don't have much time, as you know. And there are a few questions that we want to go through. You'd have been privy to this before, so you are invited to share your thoughts, etc. On, on the work, you know. And this is going to be our last week on, on networking. After that, we'll move on to some other things and just wrap up. So just give a raise of hands to um, those who actually went through the worksheet so we can see what is up. Some of us in two hands out of about 13 persons. I think that tells the story um, a lot. Anyway, moving forward. As you can put on your hands. So uh, I figure this means we won't be able to complete this um, because we will be going a bit slow. So wherever we, we end, we end, and you finish up the rest on your own. So starting out with the first question, you need to enter the last valid host on the network. And you are given a host IP address, 10.186.209.251. And you are given the notation inside the notation, so it's slash 16. So given that information, you want to determine what is the last valid host on that network. So who wants to go ahead and try to solve that? Please unmute and help us to walk through that process. So I'd like to give it an attempt, but I haven't completely grasped the concept of it. All right, so somebody who Grasp the concept. By the way, why don't grasp the concept? Because I think I have done several of these, don't it? So what is the challenge? Um so uh, the last video I I, I had to rewatch the last video a whole lot of times, but I how me explain. We still not get how all right, let me let me start, let me start um explain how we'd find the last host on this and then you, I think that would show where I'm falling off. Make sense? All right. So go ahead. All right. So given that the other notations as far as uh, 16, the the sub the sub name must be two two five five dot two five five dot zero zero. Right? All right. So let me type that here. So two five five dot five five dot zero dot zero. All right. Um, let me see. All right, in the interim, while while they're sorting that out, so two five five dot two five five dot zero dot zero tells us. Well, let me ask the question to the class: How many bits are allocated for network? How many bits are allocated for host? That's a good question, sir. Pardon me? Well, could I still answer that? Oh. Uh, one minute. I hear Stevie. Go ahead, oh. Stevie. Um, I was saying 16 for the network and 16 for the host. All right, so 16 for the network and 16 for the host. How do we know that it is 16 for the network? What tells us that? The um so the sixteen at the end. So each octet only have eight, and we're borrowing eight from the second octet. So we're borrowing the entire second octet. So it would be sixteen total for and the we, network. What, one minute. Why is it borrowing? Why is it borrowing eight? Is it borrowing eight? Why? Because because it started with a ten. So I'm under the assumption it's a. Class A IP. All right. 
Thanks so much. Uh, Jevo and you were saying something? That's what I was going to ask, sir. If the IP isn't a class A, but seen as um the subnet is represented there as 255, 255, that kind of would have throw it off in regards to it being a class A IP with a class B subnetting. No, but so class... it doesn't. So one minute. So it doesn't throw it off. So first of all, we started out with what we call classful IP addresses. So they were well defined A, B, and C. Yeah. Yes, sir. But you. But then we also spoke about the fact that we have a different kind of notation called CIDR notation, where it is no class this. What we are simply saying here is that by knowing the subnet mask or knowing how many bits are turned on in the subnet mask, I'm saying the same thing, but in a different way. By knowing how many bits are turned on in the subnet mask, then we can determine how many bits total are allocated to network, how many bits total are allocated to host. Okay, sir. So just a next good question. So in that regards, the 16 being 16 there, because naturally a class A um IP would have a um eight bit um subnet mask, which means that eight of them would be on and everything else would be off. So with this being 16, it's simply saying that it's taking the other eight from the 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 IP, the bits that are followed by after the first octet, right? That is correct. Okay, just wanted to clarify that, sir, because that was kind of one of the things that was throwing me off in regards to um how the information is, was presented because we are presented with examples where you have 24 um octets being 24 bits being activated and then we we'll bar like three or two or one from the last octet. We didn't get any explanation in regards to like this one that has the 10, but then you have to bar eight extra from the second octet. Um, if you understand. I think I did a class B, a class B IP addresses in, in one of the videos. And I might have indicated that the class A would be treated in a similar manner. So I did not only do examples with class C, if my memory serves me correctly. I also did an example or two examples with a class B IP address. And then I ended up by saying, um, so you can extrapolate. But the concepts are the same. So Yes, sir. So this is a class A IP address, as Steve and said earlier. So if this is really a class A IP address and the side annotation says slash 16, then what does that tell us? That's a question to the class. What does that tell us from a subnetting perspective? Supposed to activate a total of 16 bits. Yeah, but what does it tell us from a subnetting standpoint? Go ahead, Matthew. I see you, you open your mind. Matthew Patrick, that was. Sorry, it was, a... it was a mistake. All right, go ahead, Scott. Scott Spence. Sir. Yes, sir. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it means that you're trying to divide this network into 16 subnets. No, no, that wouldn't, it wouldn't be 16 subnets. Oh. Yeah. So the question is still on the floor. Given that this is a class A IP address and the side annotation says slash 16, then what does this tell us from a subnetting perspective? Would it tell us that now we're going to be using one minute, one minute, one minute? Who is this? Data right, sir. Who? Data, sir. I don't get that name. After you finish, please change the, the um the name on the display so that we can know who we're talking to. All right. 
it is saying Caribbean Online Academy. But go ahead. Sorry about that. I was saying that because it says slash 16, would it now be the class B addressing? Or we're oh. now using class B subnetting where the first two octets are turned on? Uh, I'm not getting the answer I'm looking for. But thanks. Um, Stephen, you're saying the same thing that um was just said a while ago, and that's not the answer I'm looking for. So you want us to tell us the exact subnet mass? No, I want you to tell me what does this mean from a subnetting perspective. So this is a class A IP address, but we are using a slash sixty inside annotation. What does this tell us from a subnetting? perspective. So based on the principles of subnetting, what is this total in? So does that for that 16 tell us that 16 bits are allocated to the network? Yes, but that don't tell us what is happening from a subnetting perspective. Um, so that is a classless address? Created? It's a classless address. That not that, that's not the answer I'm looking for. I heard a female voice now. Oh, I was saying that means that um eight subnets are created. Eight subnets, no, it's not eight subnets are would created. It, would it be the case where it's um just a wild thought, sir? But does it have anything to do with the designation in regards to it being specified to probably like a company? Right? No, 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 nothing, nothing along that line. What does subnetting mean, class? When we are doing subnetting, what are we doing? What is the principle? We're dividing up um we're dividing up a particular network into but we're do, we're we're dividing up a particular network into more than one. All right, so we're dividing a particular network into several pieces and how do we accomplish this? By assigning the subnet, sir. No, that is not the answer I'm looking for. You can't. There is a particular thing that we are doing. Turn on the bit. We, we're doing what? Say it again. Oh, I was saying we turn on the bits. Turn on which bits? The bits that come after the network address that are being borrowed, that we split up the... Oh, so you said borrowed, borrowed. Borrowed is a good word. Borrowed is a good word. So, so, so I'm going back to the original question. We have a class A IP address, which means that by default, we're using slash eight. I think you will all agree with that, right? Right? Yes. Yes, yeah, sir. That was said earlier. However, when we look at the side annotation, we're seeing slash 16. So what does this tell us from a subnetting perspective? You're boring on a picture. Thank you very much. Now that is the answer. We are borrowing the entire octet or eight bits. And we are using these eight bits to divide the, the range into different networks. That is a key concept. And that is what we did with the class C IP addresses, we borrowed some of the host bits and we use them and treat them as if they are network bits. And that's why we end up with S and H, where S is subnet bits and H is host bits. So in this case, our S is going to be what? In this case, what is S? Well, the, the 10 and the, and the one you get six. 10. One minute, how you get 10? In this case, this is the case that we're looking at right here. Yes. Huh. What is S? All right, so since it's 60, normally the notation starts from left to right. Just tell so, me what is S? The subnet. S and the subnet. What is S? 
اس موس بيا فاليو وات از اس 10 نو ذاتس نوت ترو وات از ذا كويستن سير ذا كويستن از وات از اس جيفن ذا سبنت ماس ذا سبنت ذا اي بي ادريس انسايد ذا نوتيشن وات از اس اي ميمبر تشينج ذا كويستن وات از اتش H is the host, sir. The number of hosts. What is H? And H is not the number of hosts. What is H? 2 to 16. It, 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 it has to be something concrete. It can be a range. No, as in 2 to the value of, to the power of 16. But I just want what H is. Just tell me what H is. Sir, the just, last two octets. Just H alone. So what is H? If what you're saying is true, if what you're saying is true is that H is the last two of the octet, then what is H? Two nine that one. Uh uh no 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 no. So it is clear to me that only don't watch the video then that we have that I've done. It is clear because had you watched the video, this is a very very easy question to answer. Now the closest person is Stephen. But she giving it, me it to pause at two. That's not what I'm asking. I'm asking, what is H? By the way, this is the, call this algebra. Call this indices. What is H? I just want to know H. What value does H represent in this case? Wait, that's 16. It is 16. <laughs> Because there are 16 post bits. There are 16 bits which are turned off. Sorry, I just say we had to phrase the question because. Come on, the, the question has been phrased correctly. So don't blame the question. Don't blame the question. The question has been phrased properly. I'm asking you what is H? H so you wanted the value, sir, and not me saying the number of hosts. Well, H is not the number of hosts. If you look at what we have here on the table, it says number of bits. And in bracket, it says S slash H. And I am pretty sure in one of the previous videos, I talk about what S is and I talk about what H is. S is the number of subnet bits. H is the number of host bits. So what is H? H is 16. So what is S? 16. No. Can be 16. It's 2, sir. No. Eight, Thank you very much, Scott. It is eight. And I think this is why we're having a challenge. You don't understand what the notation means. And if you don't understand what the notation means, then you can't move any further because it means that you'll be moving forward based on false premises. You need to understand that the purpose of the subnet mask is to tell you how many bits are turned on and how many bits are turned off. That's the first thing. The second thing is the bits which are turned on tell you something about the network and the bits which are turned off tell you something about the host. And the next thing that you need to factor into the mix is that not all the bits which are turned on are treated equally because some of them are borrowed. And if they are borrowed, then we call them subnet bits, which is a distinction from network bits. So yes, the total network bits will include subnet bits. But there's going to be times when we want to know distinctly what bits or how many bits 
contribute to the to the subnet itself. Is that understood? Type, type U if it is. All right, so most people say that they understand. So let's continue. So you know it's a class A IP address. And you know that you are borrowing eight bits. You borrow eight bits to be used as subnet bits. And the question, therefore, that you need to ask yourself is, if we borrow eight bits, then how many IP addresses will fall within a subnet range and also how many subnets are we talking about that's what you now need to determine so any ideas All right, so, so let me ask some points of question. How many IP addresses do we have total that we can place on hosts? Sir, would it be one two second, to the sir. Power? So it's two to the 16 power, which ends up giving us what? Uh, that is six five five three six, sir. And then you subtract two from that to get the host. Uh, no, no, no. I asked you how much for the total host. It's two to the sixteen. So the total IP address, the total hosts, is six five five three six, two to the sixteen. If I now ask you how many usable hosts we have, or how many hosts can we have within this network that can communicate on the network, then it's now 65536 minus two. Why minus two? Because one is used for the network ID and one is used for the broadcast ID. Because in every subnet, the first IP address within the range is used as the network ID. And the final one within the range is used as the broadcast ID. So therefore means that we would take away two and we would end up with six, five, five, three, four. So here's the next question. How many networks well, how many subnets do we have using this configuration? How many subnets? Come back to this. How many subnets? 16, sir. Oh, you get 16. Because um, the... The remaining amount that was left after you borrowed the extra eight would be the 16. I don't know how to process what it is. Let me, let me do this. I'm um, sorry, would it be two to the eight? Thank you very much. It would be two to the eight. Because there are eight subnet bits. It's two to the eight. Whatever two to the eight give us. Two to the eight. So that gives us.
Alrighty then. So, scroll back to here. So, you're trying to know, tell me, what is the last valid force within this thing? That's what you're trying to tell me. What's the last valid force? So the question is, given 255.255.0.0, uh, what remains constant? The 10 and the 186. The 10 and the 186. So, um, sir, just like the others, there are some tiny bits that I need to reinforce, but what I understood from the question, the last valid host on the network would either be A, 10.186. Well, we'll go, we'll, one minute, we'll go in there. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. We'll go in there. So we know for this network, the 10 and the 186 remains constant for everything that is on this network. So we're starting at 10.186.0.0. You can all agree with that, right, folks? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. So the question then becomes, what is the last IP address in this range? Last IP address in this. What is it? Sir, would it be um, 10.186.255.254? No. I ask um, you what is the last IP address in the range? I have to listen sir, carefully to be, what I'm asking. What we can do is we can write the binary. Well, you could write the binary, so based but, on the method but, but, but why would you want to give yourself more work? Yes, you could write those in binary, but why give yourself more work? So I'm, I'm just asking, what is the last IP address in this entire range? What will be the very, very last thing we'll find? Uh, the answer is 255 and not 254. So it will be 10.186.255.255. So that will be the broadcast address. So we have the network address. We have the broadcast address. And then we're asked, what is the last valid host? Which means this is going to be a usable host. Because we cannot use 10.186.255.255. So therefore, the last valid host would then be 10 dot one eight six dot two five five dot two five four. This IP address that I just type, we can now put it on a device and have that device communicate on the network, because we could not use the one that said. That two five five that two five because that is the broadband. The last valid host is ten dot one eight six dot two five five dot two five. Broadcast address is ten dot one eight six dot two five five dot two five five. The network ID is ten dot one eight six dot zero dot zero. So hopefully we have clarified some stuff. So let's look at the other one. And hopefully some more stuff will cement. So the other one says we have 10.239. Dot, what is that? 219. 
and you are given a subnet mask of 255.255.255.128. All right, so you're looking at that and you're doing some interpretation. What are some of the things that you come up with? So, um, it's a class C IP address. So the constant. One for... minute. Why is it a class C IP address? To start with ten. All right. I, I think she means subnet. Sir. Yeah. Sorry. So the ten and the two. What, what, one minute. She means what? No, I think she means class C subnet mass. Okay, my. Continue. All right, so I'm just working what I saw in the video. I could be wrong, but the constants would be 10, 239, and 205. Right. No, right? No. So 10.239.2, could... what is it, 05? Yes. Right, let me put a dot zero for now. Yeah, continue. So, um... Based on what I read, what I watched in the video, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, essentially, the last bit tells us the increment bit. The last bit? Um, How do I explain? For the IP address, for the subnet mask, the one in the fourth octet will tell us the increment amount, correct? Which one? When I said the one so in the... The, one, the 128 is the increment amount. How, how you come to that conclusion? Um. So the 255s would represent the octets that are full. Yeah. And then the 128 would represent the one the one bit that's turned on in the last, in the last um, octet, in the fourth octet. All right. No, that is very, very important. If, if you don't say that, then you're losing some of the things. So that's good that you understand that. So this 128 means that out of this octet, I now have 1000. Zero, zero, zero. And I just go and put us, well, I normally use underscore. 000. zero, zero, zero. That's how the bit pattern look. Only one of them outside of the eight is turned on. And if one alone is turned on, then it means that. Under two to the seven, under the one twenty eight would have a one, and the rest of things going down would be zero. So because everything else turned off, only one thing turned on. That is why we end up with one twenty eight. If two things did turn on, then it means that would have end up with one ninety two because it means that would have turned on one twenty eight and would turn on sixty four. And when we add a one twenty eight and sixty four, we would end up with one twenty. 192, sorry, which will be the subnet mask. So what you have said is absolutely correct. Can I repeat the last part of that? The last part of what? When I say we borrow, we borrow, we borrow a bit. All right, so the, the, the subnet mask says 255, 255, 255 dot. 128. If you convert 128 to binary, what do you get? You get this binary pattern up here, so don't it? Yes. Yeah. So this binary pattern represents 128. That's all we're saying. Okay. So now comes the next question. If it is that these three places remain constant. So 10.239.205. Then where is the subnetting being done? In which octet is the subnetting being done? Octet 1, octet 2, octet 3, or octet 4? Octet 
it is opted for. Good. So how many subnet bits do we have? The seventeen, sir. They get seventeen. So the question is, how many subnet bits do we have? Is it seven? How do you get seven? Since we already used. Since from the last octet, we're already using the initial bit, the first bit, and the other seven are turned off. Uh, there's something not, that not gelling. And I think it's not gelling because I don't watch your videos. I'm going to recommend that you know watch the videos. But I'm going to strongly recommend that you know watch the videos. They're there for a reason. Matter of fact, I am I am puzzled. Because if we were in a face-to-face -face class and I teach what I would have covered in the in the video, and we'll leave the class. Then all of that knowledge gone. Because you wouldn't be able to rewatch it, rewind it, nothing like that. So it would have been gone. No, I have taken the time to give you something in a format that you can go over it several times. And yet still, I am getting the impression that you don't see the need to make use of it. And to me, I, I am absolutely flabbergasted because I would believe that at this stage in the game you would have been bringing some sort of urgency to your learning so that you can make something of yourself when you leave university so you cannot say that you don't have the resource because I have gone beyond the call of duty to ensure that you have the resource in a format that you can make use of it um, whenever you want. So to say that I am disappointed is an understatement because I expect much more out of you. Matter of fact, your country expect more out of you. Matter of fact, your family or future family expect more out of you. Because let us not kid ourselves, folks. The world is changing. And many of you will end up with no jobs in the whole scheme of things. Why? Because the world has changed. And AI is actively trying to get the jobs them th that you want. So if you don't prove that you are the kind of person who can problem solve and learn and take initiative, and, and and do things like that, then you, you're almost putting yourself out of our work. Because the people who own the business will go out there and create some AI systems to do the very jobs that um that you're going out there to vie for. So I I am I am I am hoping that will not open on the eyes. and realize the gravity of the situation and comport yourself accordingly. But this, not, this won't cut it. You have to do more. Now, this is not a hard concept to grasp. The rule says we borrow horse bits to create the visions called subnets. This has been there from day one. Go back and check. I put the rule right in front of you with the chart. 
we borrow host bits so that we can create divisions called subnets. If it is that the subnet mass is 255.255.255, and we say that that means that the first three information out of the IP address is going to remain constant. And this part here says 128, and we write out the binary pattern. This is the binary pattern. 1000 zero, 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 followed by four zeros. And I ask you, what is the subnet in terms of bits? How many subnet bits? Then it should be easy to look at this and tell me the subnet bits. How many subnet bits? May I ask the question again? Become a confident that we don't have a um, thinking ability to figure that out. How many subnet bits? One bit, sir. It is one bit. By the way, Steve and you watch the videos. They said that, right? Yes, sir. I did watch them. Okay. So. Ironically, the one person, because two person raised them hand that them watch the videos. And ironically, the one person out of the two who has been answering consistently and getting most of the questions that I'm asking right is the person who watched the video. The videos. Go figure that out, folks. If that don't tell you something important. That should be a wake-up call for all of you. It means simply that if you watch the video and try and understand what has been presented, then you'll get the material. No, I can't watch the videos for you. But there's something that you have to do. It's one. One bit is allocated for the subnet. How many bits are allocated for the host? No, everybody's supposed to get answer that. But what's the answer? Type it in the chat. So I said two person type in the chat. Three. It was a 19. Anyway, seven is correct. So there's one bit there that is going to be used to create subnets. So if one bit is used to create subnets, then the question becomes, how many subnets do we have? And what is the answer? Thank you, Jada. It is two. How we know? It's one bit, so it is two to the one, where one represents the is number it two, of bits. Sir? Yeah, man. But Jada answered that long time. I met Mr. Jada, yeah, right. And Jada just talks it. Yeah, that's why that's why I'm Mr. Jada. Yeah, yeah. But it's, yeah, right. it's one bit. Two to the one give you two. Because with one bit, you only have two possible combinations. So you have two subnets. Now, how many hosts? Total host or host IP addresses. And that's what, and that's why I'm use number IP addresses, you know, because we know that two of them are not going to be used. So how many number of total IP addresses do we have in each subnet? Then? Mm -hmm. 
we saw out of time for so you, you have to answer quickly. Um sir, I'm getting as disconnected. Was it 128? It is 128. Or oh, you end up with 128. I said two to the seventh because Absolutely. there are seven remaining ghost bits. There you go. Two to the seven because there are seven bits that represent host. You can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The two to the seven that give us 128. So this 128 is now what they will call the the interval or the block size, whatever phrase you might see inside of the note set that you would look at. It's the block size or the increment size, 128, which means that each time you reach 128, you know, in a different subnet. So this tells us two things. One, it tells us that we have two subnets. And it tells us that within each subnet, we have 128 um, IP addresses. So where the first subnet start? It starts at 10.239.205.0. So where the next subnet going begin? One twenty-eight. Absolutely, that is where it's going to start. It therefore means that for this first one, where it's going to end. How quick? Sir, 127. 127, sir. Thank you very much. So it's 10.239.205.127. That's where it's going to end. And where this one going to end? Sir, 255. Thank you very much. So that's where that one going in. What is this question asking? I don't even remember. So I'm going to jump up on a whole heap of different tangent. Let me go back to the question. Please. So you want the valid host range for the network that the IP address 10.239.205.219 is a part of. So where would 219 fall? In subnet 1 or subnet 2? Two? Subnet 2, two. sir. It would fall in subnet 2. So if it falls in subnet 2, then what is the valid host range? Somebody tell me the value was written. Sir, zero, sir, sorry, 128 to 5 to 2, 5, 4. That's, or, inco that's incorrect. Sir, one, sorry, 129 to 2, 5, 4. Yeah, but, but next time, don't just say 129 here. Yes, sir. You need to tell the IP address. The IP address is not... An IP address must have four numbers. That is not copying. So therefore, it has to be one greater than one two eight. So that's going to be ten dot two three nine dot two oh five dot one two nine. And it has to be one less than the 255. So it's going to be 10.239.205.254. So 
So what we are saying is that any IP address within that range, we can take it, put on a device, and that device can communicate effectively on that particular network. Well, we have looked at two of them. And I'm hoping that based on what we went through, some of the concepts are a bit clearer. So I'm going to tell you to go back and watch the other ones them, that we did do. And then you are now going to finish up the rest of these. Go ahead, Steve, Stephen. Um, just to clarify, the short term correspondence was the CIDR number you're asking, correct? Yes. Yeah. I'm just asking what is the side annotation? That is it. You're talking about three, right? This one. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that's what I was asking. All right, folks. So that's us enough. And um, as soon as this is available, I will post it sometime later tonight. So take care. Bye, sir. Yeah, man.